Hi everybody, welcome to the 1UP FBA Amazon Wholesale page here on YouTube. My name is Mike, I'm a multi seven figure Amazon FBA wholesale seller. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you step by step through everything you'll need to know from starting with your legal documentation all the way up to what it looks like to place an order with a supplier. Throughout this video, I'm gonna share with you guys some bits and pieces that I actually teach our paid students of our wholesale program. So stick around till the end of the video and you guys are definitely gonna pick up on something that is actionable that you can start today. So the first part is kind of the boring stuff, but it is we need proper documentation and all the legal things set up for your business. So you will need an LLC, an EIN number, and a reseller's permit within your state. Now, when it comes to making an LLC within your state, I would highly recommend using Inkfile or LegalZoom. These are online services. You can pay a few hundred bucks. And these services will take care of everything for you to get your LLC and company name all set up within your state. Once you get those paper documents in your hand and everything is sent to you through the mail, now bear in mind this can take multiple weeks of a process for your state to set this up for you. But now with those documents, we need to go onto the irs.gov website and apply for what's called an EIN, an employee identification number. Now this is kind of like an SSN, but we're gonna be using this number for almost every single wholesale application you will be filling out from a wholesaler, a brand, a supplier, to open a business relationship with them to, op to start that business account. And the third and one of the most important things is your resale permit. There's a lot of names for this, such as reseller permit, wholesale permit, sales tax license, sales and use tax license. Depending on what state you are in, this is simply just a document you will fill out through your state registering your business as a tax exempt business, meaning you are purchasing products for the sole purpose of resale. Why this is important, we are buying products as a business and selling them to the end consumer. So when you are buying products from a wholesaler or a distributor, you will not be paying tax on those products. You are working business to business in that situation. That reseller's permit that you set up through your state you want a scanned copy of that because most wholesale distributors or suppliers are going to request a lot of your business information and a copy of that wholesale permit within your state. So now that we got the boring legalities out of the way, let's dive into what is the first step in actually locating a supplier that you can buy profitable product from. This is the beginning of the business, but it's also one of the main points where people kind of get overwhelmed. You know, what company do I work with? How many states away? Should I work with a local company? Should I work with a company on the other side of the US? So don't stress, I have an easy solution for you. So when it comes to finding a company that you would like to call, reach out to, and establish a wholesale account with, I highly recommend, and I also teach all of my students in our program, to work locally in the beginning. Most cities are going to have smaller retail stores. Now, the cool thing with that is there must be a local distributor or supplier that is dropping off merchandise. Think of your local private dollar stores or privately owned uh, gas stations or little grocery chains. They're obviously getting their products somewhat local to cut down on logistics. So. We want to identify what are the local suppliers in our state or our area that we can go open wholesale accounts with. There's a lot of benefits about opening local wholesale accounts. Not only can you physically drive there, but if you're able to go and pick up your product, such as like a cash and carry type of business, and a lot of wholesale companies will allow you to pick up the product if you are local, you're cutting down significantly on logistics, which is a big thing that we'll get into soon. The video right before this one here on YouTube, I went step by step how we can utilize Google Maps feature and type in different keywords such as supplier, distributor, wholesaler in your area and look from an aerial view on the map and actually pinpoint different businesses that we can reach out to. I highly recommend if you need help finding that first company, pause this video here, go check that one out, and then come back and pick up. That video will guide you step by step on how to find the first supplier that you can reach out to. But we're gonna talk about once you locate a company, what does it look like in terms of actually opening that wholesale account? Now, there's essentially two different ways you can reach out to a wholesale company, and this is going to be by phone or by email. Now, both of these approaches work. However, I highly recommend if you're serious about opening an account 
call the company. Call the company and speak with a representative, speak with a sales rep. And so your primary goal when you call a wholesaler is you want to get with a sales rep or an outside sales rep to talk to them about the product selection on their website or maybe some of the brands that they carry. From there, you want to request a wholesale application be sent to your email so you can fill it out, open the wholesale account, and start looking at their catalog. This is one of the tips I don't hear anyone talking about. When you reach out to a wholesaler or distributor, keep a pen and paper near you and write down the name of every single person you speak to on the phone. It doesn't matter what their position is, whether they're in sales, whether they're a receptionist, this has helped me leaps and bounds get to the right person and also sound professional. Here is the difference. If you get to the right sales rep on the phone and you have no reference point in terms of like, oh yeah, I was just talking to so-and-so, they said you're the right person to talk to for XYZ brand, that has already built a little bit of rapport in terms of getting closer to requesting an application, filling out the application, that little tiny tidbit of information can go such a long way. You're trying to build some type of rapport, some type of familiarity. You have to remember the person you're talking to on the sales side works with the people answering the phones all day long. And actually think about what you are saying. So many people just try to read off a script. You don't need to sound like a robot. If somebody named Doug answers the phone, write down that specific name. Write down Doug receptionist because by the time you get to speaking with a sales rep, you have just a little bit of familiarity that you can use to your advantage. Oh, hey, Steven, I was just speaking with Doug. Uh, I had a couple questions for him. He transferred me over to you. You've easily transitioned the conversation into something that is familiar for that sales rep, which is their coworkers or what their coworkers speak about or what information their coworkers may know. So it makes the conversation feel a lot less heavy essentially not only does it show professionalism it really helps the conversation and it leads you right into getting a wholesale application and asking about their product when you speak with the sales rep so moving on you communicate with the sales rep hi we're interested in your product we are a retailer based out of you know city state that's typically what i say you guys need to remember you are more than an amazon seller okay you are an online retailer i don't even say online at this point just say retailer. We're a retailer based out of Houston, Texas. We saw a great selection of product on your website. I wanted to call and inquire. I was just speaking with Doug. Doug transferred me over to you. Do you have a moment to answer some questions about the product on your web? Sure. Easy transition, guys. Use that script. Call these companies and be personable. Moving on to the application. They're going to send you an application. This is where your EIN, your business information, having a proper LLC, all the things to fill that application out are going to come into play. So complete the application and send it back to that sales rep. Now, I told you this would be filled with tips. Here is another pointer before you get off the phone with that sales rep and they're going to say, oh, yeah, we'll email you you know, an application, hey, so-and-so, would you mind, do you have any type of catalog or preview of your product or brand selection? Uh, while you're sending me the application, we'll take a look at some of the brands. Why you want to request this while you are on the phone is because you don't know the next time you'll actually be able to talk to that person. Especially if it is a Friday, you wanna get some type of research done, some type of understand what that company has available for you. Cause come Monday, Tuesday, they get busy and you hit the weekend. So that is another pro tip for you. Before you get off the phone, try to do everything you can and get some type of product or catalog along with the application they're sending through. We're moving on to the fun part, okay? You now have a catalog, you filled out the application. What types of tools and software do we need to actually process this inventory? I like to use analyzer.tools to scan all of my spreadsheets. Now, I will link that down in the description below. I've been using analyzer.tools for years. It is an amazing software that scans the UPC code and pricing, and it, it automatically links up with Amazon listings and calculates your potential profit on the product. Now, that brings me into stage two of product research. Hands down and without a doubt, the best way to do product research is very slow, and very tedious, but it is the most in-depth way, and that is manual searching. Going line by line on these spreadsheets, either copying, pasting, or just rewriting what the product is from the catalog into Amazon. 
Why this can help you so much to find profitable opportunity is so we can find those multi-packs, the bundles, the two packs, the case packs. That is where a lot of the profit in my business comes from is repacking, bundling into twos, bundling into threes, sometimes taking a six pack and bringing it down into a three pack. So you will not typically find those product offerings by just scanning a spreadsheet. So I recommend start by scanning a spreadsheet with a tool like analyzer.tools. Once you have a good idea what brands you wanna focus on, go back to the catalog and do some manual searching. Look at what multi-packs and bundle offers are available on Amazon. Now, how do we calculate our profit? I use a tool called RevSeller. Very inexpensive, it's a Chrome extension. It goes right on your Chrome browser. RevSeller is essentially just an on-screen calculator. You can type in your cost and what the current buy box price is. It typically plugs that in anyway. It'll give you your net profit. It will subtract your Amazon fees. It'll tr subtract the pick pack and ship fee from Amazon and let you know if you are actually profitable on that item. So by going one by one on each product, now keep in mind this can take weeks or up to quite literally a couple months. And quite honestly, there's a lot of videos out there that are full of fluff. They say just scan a spreadsheet, pick the top items and make 10,000 a month. And that's not how this business works. Scanning a spreadsheet with a spreadsheet scanning tool is an amazing starting point. It is a launch pad to understand what brands and what potential offers a company carries. Then we go into that stage two of manually searching each item line by line. Now, yes, it does take time, but this is where a lot of people quit. So as long as you segment it out to look at, look at 30 to 40 items every single day. By the end of each week, you've gone through a few hundred and it may only take you three or four weeks to go through a thousand item catalog. Now, you are going to find the best opportunities doing that because you're gonna be able to find those two packs, three packs, and four packs. That brings us into the next section, which is now that we have product and we want to place a purchase order, what does that look like with a supplier? It's as simple as sending an email with an Excel spreadsheet with the items and quantities you would like to order. Now, a couple questions you will want to ask a supplier. Do they have a minimum order quantity, right? Do they have a minimum order of maybe $1,000 or $2,500? And the second question I would ask them is at any level of an order, do you offer free shipping? If you can get free shipping from a company, especially when you are shipping pallets, I would almost always try to hit their minimum because shipping can become very expensive. Hundreds, if not a thousand dollars or more to ship multiple pallets, especially across a few states. So once you get to the point, you've done some product research, you've used a tool like RevSeller and manually searched through these catalogs, you have a list of products where RevSeller says, you know, there's a three, $4 profit on it, or we could bundle an item together. Once you have a big list made up in either Excel, or you could even do an old school on paper, write down the item numbers from the supplier, inquire, place your purchase order. You will typically pay for the order either through ACH. So a company will re request your bank info and draw from the bank. The second way, which is pretty common, which is wire, just sending a wire to them. They'll provide the wire information. The third way is filling out a credit card form and you could pay with a credit card. Once the product is paid for, that company is obviously gonna pick pick and pack your order and let you know, hey, it's ready for pickup. Now at this point in the business, you have two options. You can either prep the product yourself or the second option is pay an Amazon FBA prep center to handle all of the stickering, bundling, bagging, all of these things to get it ready for the Amazon fulfillment center. What I personally teach in our wholesale program is that if you are just starting in wholesale or you are newer to the process of building a pallet or this is your first time shipping into Amazon, I highly recommend start by doing your own product prep. Now I know the idea of completely passive income and paying everybody to do everything sounds amazing, but to learn the step-by-step -step process of what does it look like? How do you label? How do you bundle? How do you repack your product? What does it look like to box it up or make your first pallet? Having the hands-on experience and building that shipping plan on your Seller Central account. If you work with a prep center and they're requesting certain labels like FN SKU label or the box labels, you're gonna easily be able to put the shipment together and get those documents over to them. Now with the wholesale business model, you are typically shipping pallets. So you can either go through Amazon's partnered carrier program where they will either send out an Amazon truck or a partnered carrier to, to go pick the pallets up from either uh, your house or a commercial warehouse or maybe your supplier directly if they've already done the product prep. 
The second option is utilizing a broker, and we do this a lot in our business to negotiate freight pricing, is using a freight broker to move our pallets around like Freight Quote or Uni Shippers. And I highly recommend you do this if you are really starting to get deeper into the wholesale business. This allows you to easily contact your freight rep, say, hey, we have three pallets coming out of Newark, New Jersey, going to Columbus, Ohio, or whatever location. They're gonna give you some freight estimates and you can decide, is there any way we can ship it directly to Amazon? Would it be cheaper to pay my supplier to do some prep? There's so many factors that go into logistics, so maybe I'll just make one video just on the logistics of this business. But the takeaway here is use a freight broker or Amazon's partnered carrier to move your pallets around. So congratulations, you've gone through the whole process from A to Z for getting your product into Amazon, but now the most important part, are we profitable? Using a tool like Sellerboard, it is a profit and loss analytics tool that keeps track of every single sale in your Amazon business. If you're not currently using a tool like Sellerboard, I highly, highly recommend you get it. This allows you to actually audit your inventory. We need to know how our items are performing, how frequently are they selling, what's the profit, the margin, the ROI, and this ability to audit your products is how we actually differentiate from items we want to continue to purchase from a vendor after we do a test order of these products and items we no longer want to carry ever again. This is really where the wholesale business circles back around and your money starts working for you over and over again is after we've sold the product, we've analyzed it on a tool like Sellerboard, we're going to be stepping into placing our second, third, fourth, fifth order with that wholesale company. Now, with the data you receive on Sellerboard about how those products performed on Amazon, it might be time to either remove a couple products from your order, or in the meantime, while those items were selling, you've continued to research that catalog. So now you have a few new items you would like to test, a few items you don't wanna carry anymore, and a few you definitely wanna reorder because you noticed they were profitable and they sold very well. This is really the entire wholesale business A to Z, is having the proper documentation, using Google Maps, or a lot of other methods I talk about here on my YouTube channel, so definitely check out some of the other videos on how to actually locate and find these suppliers. Whole process of working with the sales rep, placing a purchase order, paying for the product, getting it shipped to Amazon, auditing those products performance and rinse and repeat. This is truly why I absolutely love the Amazon wholesale model. You're selling everyday products, you're not creating any listings on Amazon, and it's rinse and repeat. We either reorder the same products or we test a few new ones, we remove a few ones. It's a very fluid business model. You're selling name brand products that everyone already knows and loves, and that is why I continue to be so passionate about specifically wholesale on Amazon. If you are really ready to take your wholesale business to the next level, I highly recommend checking out the link below. It has all the details and information about our A to Z wholesale program. I go through every single thing that you will need to know to start, scale, and continue to grow your Amazon wholesale business. Not only do we have a private Discord, we have a private support email that you get access to. Every two weeks, we meet with students for an online group call where I teach you something new every two weeks or we collaborate on the current state of Amazon and some changes that are coming up. So you're always, you're constantly in the loop, you're up to date, you know what's going on. And I also give you tips and tricks how to prepare for the season coming up. In our last group call, we went on how to really prepare for fourth quarter now that it is September and how to maximize opportunities that are out there that not everybody talks about. There's over 95 videos within our program, over 30 hours of material for you to go through step-by-step trainings from how to process your spreadsheets, what to say to suppliers, how to handle logistics situations, how to prep, how to pack. And one of the bonuses we added in May of this year was over an hour of material of behind the scenes of our actively running seven-figure wholesale business. I show you our boxes, our supplies, our poly bags, down to what labels we use, the entire process of receiving inventory, processing, sorting, repacking. Like I said, it is linked below. Definitely check it out, get involved, hop on our group calls, active in the Discord, ask questions. There's tons of supportive members that are there to help you. Along with that, when you join, you get a one hour onboarding call directly with me. 
and I'll take a look at where you're at on Amazon and we'll make a game plan moving forward with your wholesale endeavors. So if you stayed till the end, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the detailed content I provide here on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.